this week of Just Jeff TV is brought to you by Hall of Fame Studios, located in Jamaica, Queens. Take over, the break's over, nigga. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. I'm gonna show you how great I am. Ryan, and I'm on Just Jeff TV. What's up, world? It's Just Jeff TV, and right now I'm in Jamaica, Queens, Hall of Fame Studios with the beautiful and versatile music artist. Mm -hmm. She's Ryan. Hi, guys. How you feeling? Great. How are you? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. So, speaking of Hall of Fame Studios, you say you're starting to spend a lot of time here. What type of relationship do you guys have? Well, the owner, Jewel, he also has a... Um, liquor company, Sparkling Wine Company. Okay, so okay. I'm one of the ambassadors for his uh, sparkling wine. It's called Bottega. Okay. And I also work in the studio providing, you know, just a space for artists like myself to basically do whatever they want. Um, okay. Hang out, have events, shoot, of course, videos, regular photo shoots. It's just a creative space. Okay, speaking of a uh, creative space, you're extremely versatile. And I almost feel bad just stating that you're a music artist. What are some of the other things that you involve yourself in? I mean, my background is from photography and graphic design. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I transitioned into modeling. So I was getting in front of the camera. But I've always been in theater, the performing arts. I grew up playing the clarinet. Just, I mean, everything. Like, I think that um, it just took me a little while to find myself and find what I wanted to do firstly. You know okay. what I mean? So I make music. That's what I do. But Did I you... also model and okay. act and do all that. So um, I was reading your bio. Yes. <laughs> and one thing that I did see is that you started out as a VJ, as a hostress. And that's pretty dope to me because you had articles published in Vibe and The Source and things of that nature. So... Being in that type of space and being able to get published in those type of magazines, how are you able to incorporate that into your artistry? Like, do you still use certain things you've learned through that platform to apply and use as a loophole? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, when I was a VJ, it made me, firstly, more comfortable in front of the camera. It made me more personable, more charismatic. Um, you know, you learn a lot about yourself when you yeah. have to interview other people. And it took me, you know, it basically took, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah, what you I do. Know, yeah, I think it's too about me. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it was me trying to transition slowly into becoming a music artist. Okay. So, you know, I had to take my baby steps from behind the camera, taking pictures and videos of people, yeah. to then modeling myself, then interviewing people. And now I'm just all the way Were you just here. waiting your turn or, or did you already, or are you already in the process of making music? Or were you waiting to get to that point? in which you know your music be heard in a, in a space to be enjoyed? I didn't have any music. Like when I was a VJ and a model, I didn't yeah. have any music. All I had was covers on the internet because I didn't know the first thing about becoming a music artist. You know, um, of course I had a lot of music friends, you know, yeah. friends who did music, but I didn't know where to start. Okay. So I wasn't really waiting my turn. I was just trying to learn and understand how am I going to start when in all actuality I just had to do so, it. So what clicked? Oh, that was it? It was just going out there and doing it? Or did you have somebody in your back to motivate you? Yeah, so I used to um, put out covers. Um, my favorite artist is like Amy Winehouse. Okay. I really like how she's soulful and urban and still just, she keeps it real. You know yeah. what I mean? So I used to put out Amy Winehouse covers, and that's really all I had. And this dude named um, Slim, Fame School Slim, okay. found me on the internet from that. And he just found my Facebook page, found my Twitter. He was like, you need to come to the studio. 
And you know, I was I was skeptical. I was like, this is just another creepy person trying to get me into yeah. the studio. I was very skeptical about everything. And then finally, I went to the studio with no music, and he ex he actually helped me develop a sound and told me like, it's okay, you can do it. You yeah. know what I mean? So thanks to Slim, now I have my whole project. I got a catalog of music. Thanks to him, you know, I work with other producers yeah. now, but he definitely started it. So with Fame School, are you still working with them as well? Yeah. So I know you have a lot of, there's a lot of people, talented people out of that camp. Mm -hmm. Is there people that you still affiliate yourself with? I'm, I'm always going to be affiliated with yeah. Fame School. That's my family. You know what I mean? As in terms of like me being Fame School, I'm just, I'm She's Ryan. I'm okay. Sir, you know, um, but they're always going to be here. That's the people who started me, the people who helped develop me as a music artist you know what I mean yeah. they help me find a sound they help me get out there so um yeah I'm, that's family forever okay yeah so speaking on she's Ryan sir mm -hmm. right um you're the creative director for yourself right yeah so you're in control of everything that's happening mm -hmm. so what type of task that do you run in on a daily basis as far as yourself okay. like how do you and how do you keep honest with yourself as well uh, how I keep honest with myself is I really, you know, I pride myself in my humility. You know what I mean? I'm around, I'm blessed, and I'm around people who just started to people who've been in the game for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. So I have mentors and people who have been through loopholes, who had everything and lost everything in the same year, to people who don't have nothing, who are still trying to find their way. So, you know, I just keep it real with myself by remaining humble and, and learning from my environment. And um, a day-to-day, -day, she's Ryan day. Um, yeah, what does that consist of? <laughs> uh, it seems like you keep yourself busy. Yeah, I'm pretty busy. Uh, you what, what you want, like, how it really goes down? I'm talking about, nah, I don't want to know, break uh, up, brush your teeth. <laughs> I mean, like, as far as talent-wise, music-wise. Yeah, I mean, like, what I does that up, consist of? I get up, I run all of my social media accounts. So after I get up, do my yoga, whatever, I go straight to my email because I don't want to miss anything. Yeah, I got to do yoga because y'all be playing. That's, that's, People are crazy. That's so, how you, um, that's, how you keep, that's how you keep balance. You got to. You have to. Um, but I go straight to my social media accounts. I make sure I post a certain amount of times a day. Um, I go directly into my emails. I answer what is there first. Um, sometimes I miss out on emails, but I'm handling everything my, <laughs> yeah, I'm handling everything myself. Um, Has it gotten to the point where it's overwhelming? Not yet, because like I said, you know, you got to humble yourself. Yeah. There's people out there that's bigger than me with no management, with no PR. You know what I'm saying? If they can do it, I can definitely do it. And I enjoy actually handling my own business for right now yeah. until I'm physically incapable of doing it. Meaning, if I meet someone who's the ultimate plug and has my best intentions at heart, you can be my manager. Okay. You can be my publicist. But I'm not out here like I need a manager or an assistant to answer. Don't get it done regardless. Right. I'm going to do this. So, you know, I answer my emails. Usually, uh, my days consist of one shoot, a studio session, um, and whatever freelance gig I've booked for that day. Okay. Living in New York, I've learned to outsource myself, whereas I'm going to make money every single week, no matter what. So, Is this all you do? Is this your only hustle? I'm a music artist, but I also... Full-time? or free, Yeah, I'm a freelance music artist, model, and actress. Um, this is what I do. So whether it comes to being a brand ambassador for a brand, you know, that's, that's another way in. That's more exposure. That's more, whatever you want to call it. You have to not only be a music artist, you know what I'm saying? What else are you offering people and what makes people want you? So that's how I manage my day to day. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I like that. You remain versatile. Yeah. Reminds me of somebody I know. I ain't bragging. I'm Aww, just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, as far as your latest EP, Hood Hippie, mm -hmm. what was the response like? It's good. I mean, I literally put it out with Fame School. It's their production and um, some of their songwriting behind it. And we put it out just to put it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I have this thing, like, as a music artist, I'm going to do whatever I like. Somebody's going to like it. Somebody's not going to like it. Yeah. I'm not forcing my music down nobody's throat. You know what I mean? Pause. So I'm just saying I put it out and got an excellent response. It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. I get recognized in the street. I was on the train and someone had on my mind on not knowing it was me right there. Oh, that's like, dope. yeah, it was crazy, and um, I love, I love it. I love the response that I'm getting. So and compared to like when you started, because I listened to you like back in like 2013, it was more like you was fitting. 
And yeah. now it seems like you're in a comfortable space to try different things with your music and become more versatile. Mm -hmm. Is that so? Or? So how I actually started was super pop. Like yeah. very, very, very pop. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and um, what we've realized with commercial pop music is you either need the ultimate plug or the ultimate budget. Yeah. So what I did is I didn't, you know, I didn't change my direction but I I definitely just did what I listened to in the club I did on my mind because that's the, that's what I like to listen to that's what I like to party to and now instead of you know I don't party around a bunch of like pop yeah. things or like a bunch of children you know what I'm saying yeah. so now my my music is being distributed to DJs and played on on these radio stations because it's more relatable to my crowd and who, I who would you say is your crowd? I don't. I mean, it, it's so crazy. Like, there's people in like Wisconsin hitting me up, and then I'm going to Sweden because I'm popular in Sweden. Okay. You know, I don't know who, who they are, but they like what I'm doing now. Yeah. So I like to I like to stick to what I'm good at. Also experiment with new things, but also give the people what they want. Okay. And what um, shows you have coming up? I know you mentioned you have the BT Spotlight. Yeah, I got BT Music Matters coming. BT Music Matters, yeah. excuse me. No, that's cool. I have Music Matters in June. Um, I have a show actually next week, Wednesday on 420. And um, that's at Mercury Lounge, so you guys can come. And um, I'm going to Sweden in May. Sweden? Yeah. How'd you set that up? Is that all through you as well? Yeah. Um, there's a group of really big, first of all, my first, um, the first song on Hood Hippie is called I Gotcha. The producer on that is from Sweden. Um, and, uh, but I don't know if this booking was through something like that, but apparently yeah. my music is very popular there. So about a year ago, I was hanging out with these two girl DJs. They were visiting New York from Sweden. Yeah. And uh, they were just really cool. And I found out they were this, these two big DJ promoter girls. And I got hit up. I got an email um, saying, you know, we'd like to book She's Ryan. They thought they were talking to a manager. They were talking to me. Okay, okay. And I ended up getting booked for a few shows in Sweden next month. Tell me a little bit about being a female in the industry. Do you feel like you get a fair shot compared to some of the males out there? Do you feel you get a fair listen? I mean, it's cliche to say that it's a male-dominated industry, but it yeah. uh, <clears throat> kind of is. I think that being a woman in this industry, you just have to stick to your guns. You have to make sure that no one is taking advantage of you because it's very easy yeah. for a woman, especially someone like myself who has sex appeal, who doesn't mind being comfortable in, a, you know, sometimes in a one-piece cat suit. You know what I mean? You have to basically respect yourself and make sure that, you know, nobody's going to get over on you. Yeah. There's, there's, there's people who use their feminine, you know, power to get further. And then there's people who... Don't. Um, I'm just myself, yeah. and I'm respected. People respect me. When I walk into a meeting at a label, nobody... I mean, of course men are attracted, and that's yeah. fine, but nobody is is reaching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody's disrespecting me, and that's because of the way I hold myself. Exactly. Way. So I feel like being a woman in this industry, yeah, we have a fair shot. You just have to work hard, and that's it, just like anything else. You know what I'm saying? So, so with the female people that you have to compete with in order to be heard... Do you feel like you're ready to step against that type of competition? Because it seems like it's, it's only a small few. There's a lot of music out there, but as far as the radio, as far as the videos they put out on TV, you only put out at least, you know, a small few. Yeah. Do you feel like you're ready to go against Yeah, those absolutely. Type of I mean, everything is competition, even when you feel like it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even if I sit here and tell you, I'm not competing against nobody, it's all love, I want to work with every female artist, which is true. Yeah. In the public's eye, you are a competition. You know, you're in a in a in a battle. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm ready. You know, I'm ready for what this industry holds, and I've actually experienced a lot, and I'm just growing. You know what I mean? I do want to work with a, a bunch of people, but I'm not comparing myself. I think that's the problem with. Like, what's some of the, what's some of the individuals you look forward to working with? I mean, if we're, we're talking about women or like... Or just in general, just in general. I mean, I want to work with huge people. I want to, yeah. I want to, somebody who's going to twist my sound. I want to work with Timbaland and Pharrell and Missy Elliott. I want to work with Let's people. Say. Yeah, I want to work with people who are going to experiment and, and, and elevate my sound to something so crazy. 
So that's what I'm, I want to do. I want to work with huge songwriters, people who write for Justin Bieber and Katy Perry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want that hit. That's what I want. So that's what I'm looking for. You so know as, far as, as far as your sound, how do you look to keep improving and keep changing and keep current? Is that just the producer that you're working with, the writers that you're working with, or is that something you just pick up through the energy that's around you? Both. I mean, you know, it's a little bit of both. I think that an artist working with a good producer and having a relationship with the producer is vital. Yeah. You know, it's, it's tough when you just picking beats from the internet and um, going and recording in your boy's studio and, and then hoping that you... It's tough. It yeah. works for some people, but that's not how I work. I really need that, that space around me where I come in and the producer wants to work with Exclusiveness. me. Exclusiveness. Yeah, I mean, you know, Slim, yeah. he definitely, definitely started that off. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I walked into his studio, he said, you have a raspy, lower tone voice. He was like, you're not a sing singer. You're not an R&B singer, but you're not like some female MC, which is true. I'm not a rapper. I don't. And that's dope because that yeah. means you have your own sound. Yeah. That means you it's, can't be copied. That means you can't. Right. And I enjoy that. So yeah. we developed the sound, whereas now... It's different, it's new, people are like, the fuck is this? All right, cool, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I'm always, I think, by staying current, I just need to be able to try new things and not be stuck doing the same thing all the time, you so, know? So down the road, as far as you being the creative director, sir, how do you how do you see your near future? Like, what plans do you have in place in order to take those next steps? I can't. I well, there's that one you thing. Can put out there. Yeah, there's, there's, there's <laughs> a few things being. that I can't say, but yeah. I will say, you know, being the whole backing of my brand, a lot of stuff, magazine covers and and traveling. Traveling is is really important to me. You know what I mean? Are you touring yet? Not. I mean, we don't even know what can happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, your life can change in a day. Definitely. You know? That's why you always got to keep working. Yeah. That's all I do. I plant seeds and watch them grow. And that's my whole life. So I know that in the future I'll be on tour. I know you'll see me in magazines and commercials and billboards. That's, that's inevitable. But for right now, I'm just working. Okay, okay. And off topic, let's talk a little bit about these tattoos. I ain't got no tattoos. Oh man, how long you been getting inked up? Um, since I was 19. 19? Yeah, 19, 20. And what, are you done? Are you, are you I'm done? Not, are I'm you not hanging it up? No, hell no. <laughs> I'm never done. I'm gonna end up doing my whole body. But um, when I was 19, I used to do tattoos. So, oh, you used to do tattoos? Yeah. So the guy who actually took me under his wing yeah. in his shop, he did my first tattoo and I basically never stopped from there. You did any tattoos of, of yourself on you? No. Uh, would you? Yeah, I guess. Are you still talented with no. the needle? No, I right. put I put down the needle. I, I did tattoos first, then went into photography, graphic design, and stuff like that. But I, I always tell him, like, once life gets steady and yeah. I'm not out here busting my ass and hustling. and Outside of music, what's your, what's your like, favorite trade that you have? Cooking. Cook? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we're gonna have a cook off. That's next gonna have a, Oh, you gonna, you're talking to Chef Jeff, right? Chef, that's not even fair that it rhymes. It's, that's not that's fair. That just means that's just me. It was fair. meant to happen. That's oh, all okay. I meant. Chef Jeff, I'm prepare sure. to lose. I'm, nah, that's Yo, a bet. Lungs. Yo, listen, we're gonna lock that in. I don't know what day, what date, but we're gonna lock that in. Chef Jeff versus Chef Ryan. That's I mean, not like, even ah, fair. And you I don't even think that sound good, but. You already see where this is going. It's going to be a landslide victory. I already know what you're going to make. What you spaghetti. know? Spaghetti. You look like the spaghetti, spaghetti type of dude. First like, of all, it's pasta, if anything. Let's, let's, you, let's speak with some respect. Every dude that spaghetti. says they can cook makes spaghetti. I'm not every dude. It ain't yeah, going to be Chef spaghetti. Jeff, right? What's your favorite type of cuisine? Anything with seafood. I'll see what I can do. I see what I can do. Yeah, see if right. life, yeah. I'm going to let you know. Okay. Good Matter luck. of fact, let's head to the kitchen right now. <laughs> right, listen. Ain't nothing left. It's just Jeff. We're about to head to the kitchen. It's a cook off. Let's get out of here. Chef, you got to hit your ass. All right. So all you got to do is look in that camera. Tell me your name. Tell me the show we on. We're on Jeff Chef TV, right? I believe so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Ooh, you better catch catch you a vibe, nigga. You better catch one of these vibes. Let's get it. All right. Well, check.